Good. So very good evening, everyone. We are back into our South American box. And today is our second tasting. Two wines, one white and one red. Very, one white and one red. So very easy, um, straightforward. And the idea is for us to find out where those two wines come from. You know, it's not about the grape variety, it's about the country in itself. Um, so sometimes we, we, we have a, an idea of the grape variety. Sometimes we have an idea of the grapes that have been used into the wine, but we can't, we can't guess the country. Um, last Saturday, last Friday, I was, I was in, um, in a dry tasting with some of my um, um, fellow MW students. And we were um, um, discussing what, could prove, what we could use with regards to argument that a um, muscat was coming from Alsace. So we knew that the wine was coming from Alsace. We knew the aromas, we knew the, the, the style in itself um, was according to the region. But we couldn't come up with an argument to say, you know, because of this, it's coming from Alsace. And suddenly we had a click. We had a click because the wine was so high quality that we couldn't think of any other country that could produce or any other region that could produce high quality Grand Cru, Grand Cru quality wine made from um, Muscat. Therefore, it was from a sauce. So there are several ways to argue where the wine is coming from. Quality is one of them. Tradition is one of them. Um, Winemaking technique is one of them. The, the, the grapes that have been used for the, um, for the blend is another argument. And sometimes even the quality, the low quality or the high quality or the price band is an argument that can be used to um, suggest that wine is coming from a particular country. So we have a, a white wine and a red wine. So start tasting my white wine as you guys help me with regards to your notes for this wine. Could be one at a time. That's quite interesting nose, isn't it? The first thing I felt was jabuticaba. Hmm. Would it be jabuticaba or, or um, the star fruit? What they say, the star fruit? Um, carambola. Carambola. I guess it's more of a carambola style. Yes, but yeah, yeah. Different. What could it be? Does it mean um, um, prolonged contact with oxygen? Does it mean, what does it mean? What, what this sort of aroma tells you? I could feel some brioche also that, uh, or some cream that made me think it has contact with the lease. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> also white flowers, pear, peach going to this way and not uh, citric aromas. I didn't feel much. Mm -hmm. So it would take me to a non, non, um, Aromatic grape. Um, Maybe a Chardonnay. Okay, it's a okay. It's a good. It's a good beginning. It's a good call. Um, but let's make let's 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 think of um, the aromas in itself. Is it clean? Or I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh -huh. there are some people waiting to to oh, Really? Okay, well, there. Yeah. Here they are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, Cecilia. Good evening, Bruno. Jutz. I'm sorry, I, I, I just um, started, just kick off the, uh, the tasting, um, and I didn't realize you guys were there. Um, so, and 
And um, Hosanna was just saying that she feels she, she can smell a little bit of flour and, and some peachy and stuff. But, but then I interrupted her and, and, and asked if um, whether the, the, the overall aroma of the, um, of the white wine is clean or unclean. Because, you know, the, the color for me, it's like a medium, medium lemon color. Um, is there an indication that maybe this is a natural wine? Or is there an indication that maybe this is a wine that ha hasn't been filtered? Or is that an indication that may maybe this wine hasn't been used? They haven't used any sort of um, collaging, for example, you know. So it's, it's important when, when Heloise mentioned about the star fruit, what does it mean? So it's, an, it, it's very important for us to start thinking what leads me to that conclusion? What's the indication? Or what this piece of information leads me to? So, um, and I would answer, I think the, the aromas, the, the, the nose of this wine is, is clean. So I would straight away say, it's not a natural wine. You know, there's no volatile acidity <coughs> at all, which for me is a good thing. I'm always happy when there is no volatile acidity. <laughs> So what else do you think about this wine? I think it's more primary fruit uh, aromas and mm -hmm. more into the primary aromas. Uh, I think I, I felt some um, buttery aromas. It probably went, uh, had some mm -hmm. malolactic uh, fermentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, who would like to and, maybe discuss the whole the whole palette? Maybe you, Lisa. How do you see the, the wine, the whole palette, the full tasting note? Of the okay, for me, it's um, dry wine with a high acidity. No, not no tannins a medium alcohol, and I think it's a medium plus body because it has f f some fullness in the mouth. And the, the, the flavor intensity, it has really pronounced, but it has like a pronounced bitterness more, more than some fruit. And the, the, the flavors like for me, it's mainly wood and spice and some vanilla and some fruits, uh, citrus, some lime, peach, some fresh fruits. There's also a lot of uh, wood. Mm -hmm. And for me, the, the bitterness is what is, is, bod is bothering more. It's a, it's a medium plus finish and a long finish with the bitterness. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think we... Uh, could feel some tannins. Yeah, I, I felt some. A little bit. Yeah. Mm. That, that's interesting. So ask yourself where this sort of a grippiness is coming from. How can you make, um, from where can you ex extract some grippiness from a white wine? Um, oh no, we have a winemaker in the room. So winemaker, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Easy. Why is oh, it always God. with me? <laughs> oh, <why laughs> Shouldn't God. the others have a chance too? <laughs> it's not How fair. How can we have this sort of a grippiness from a white wine? W what could have happened? Uh, several things could have happened. You could have had some skin contact. And you could have um, uh, had more pressure in when you were crushing or pressing the grapes, maybe extracting something from the seeds. Uh, it's, clear, it's clearly ripe, so it's, it's not from the, 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 brain, the, the branches. Uh, it's not green tendons. It could be from uh, some time in wood or some wood contact. Uh, I also felt this, this uh, buttery, creamy, you know, it suggests some time in, in the wood, maybe some mm -hmm. batonage, but 
uh, analyzing the, the, the whole uh, wine, I don't think is that an expensive wine uh, to use uh, oak barrels, for example. I wouldn't say so. Uh, I think it's a very good wine to its quality, but it's not a outstanding wine or a mm -hmm. premium wine. I think it's a very well made. Mm -hmm. so, so it could be for, this from wine? different. Who buys this wine? If if you were to make this kind of wine, to whom would you sell? I think it would sell uh, quite easily in wine bars, um, maybe wine shops, but even some supermarkets. If you had a specialized section, I think mm -hmm. it's 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 really pleasing. It's fu full of fruit. It's, it's easy to to like. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's not. It's not difficult. It's very open. And, and, it's delicious. I think it has a feminine side to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it has personality. I think it's yes. a wine that has a lot of personality. Yes. This thing that mm -hmm. Ligia described as uh, the body impressed me, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the heav heaviness on the palate, you know, how long it stays and how it's really full in your mouth it, it really impressed me mm -hmm. I, I didn't expect it from the, mm -hmm. the the first impression on the aromas yeah i think the the better descriptor would be um the richness because it's quite rich and creamy yes. at the same time yes. so thank you very much elise and um, who else would you like to share your comments your thoughts on this wine what is it and remember we need to come up with an idea of where this wine comes from and maybe the best way for us to understand to come up to a conclusion would be analyzing either the grape varieties or a winemaking technique so what sort of uh, information can we gather from our tasting note to come to a conclusion anyone <laughs> Right, so perhaps um, can anyone share your tasting notes of this wine, you know, maybe discuss something different than, that we haven't addressed yet? I could I address the bitterness that each uh, felt in the mouth? I, I think there is a, I read that sometimes when the wine has some corrections in acidity or even in tannins, that could, uh, that could bring this bitterness. Mm -hmm. And for me, Disha said that, that uh, so it, this wine has high alcohol, but I think that there is acidic correction and middle plus, sorry, with, uh, high acidity. But for me, it's medium plus acidity, and I think there is some acidity correction to bring yeah. this bitterness and finish mm -hmm. off of them all. Um, but, but, but when I tasted wines that have been corrected, I, I often find i often feel that the wine is quite hard with regard to the texture of the acidity nor not the tannins or the texture itself and i think that this bitterness is more related to the extra extraction or um, long skin contact and the long skin contact does make sense when you pay attention to the um to the color of the wine so I remember that whoever mentioned um, the aromas, they said, you know, um, peachy, pears, floral, primary aromas, therefore, youthfulness. When we are talking about a youthful wine, doesn't, doesn't it strike you that the color is so deep and kind of a developed? I mean, for me, it's medium, medium pale, uh, medium lemon, therefore, Skin contact does does connect with the fact that the wine has a, an intense color. So if it's youthful, it should have a light color. But it's youthful, it has and it has a, a medium color. And then you pay attention to the palate and you realize that it does have some grippiness. 
you can call it bitterness. So it does make sense. So you can say, you can understand or justify that the wine had some contact on the skin. So therefore you need to make another question. Why does he have contact with the skin? And then by reading your tasting notes, can you connect with any grape variety? Does this speak to you, Sauvignon Blanc? I think it's more does, like Sauvignon Blanc. Does it, does it scream to you, Sauvignon Blanc? I want to see your faces. Okay, good. Does it scream to you like, I don't know, um, Muscat? So, you know, draw what kind of a grape variety does it, um, um, uh, what sort of grape variety it, it is in line with? And then if you can't come up with one grape variety, that could be that you may have like a, a blend of grape varieties. And if you have a blend of grape varieties, skin contact does make sense when you're talking about a blending or co-fermentation and so on and so on and so on. So every single comment that you make on a wine, you have to make a question mark. Where is it coming from? Now, but if uh, if the wine has gone through malolactic, mm -hmm. uh, normally uh, it's a Chardonnay. Mainly it's a Chardonnay. Or mm. could they do it with other varieties also, like uh, so? But, okay. Good point. Why would someone um, allow a white wine to go through melolactic? Do we have a winemaker here in the room? <laughs> <laughs> I just quit. <laughs> I don't make any wine anymore. <laughs> Why melolactic? Why would you use melolactic into a white wine? To reduce acidity. What else? That, that is one point. In California, they don't use for reducing of acidity. Creaminess. Creaminess. Do you get creaminess to this wine on a palate? Right. Okay, good. Okay. So that's one of the reasons. What grape varieties people usually use, or sort of white grape varieties, people, people allow going through melanatic? Chardonnay. Okay, Chardonnay. what else? Let's make a list. Chardonnay. Chant. What else? Semillon. Semillon. There you go. Where do they use semillon? Where do they where they you they allow malalatic into semillon? Where? In Bordeaux. Oh yes, Bordeaux. Okay. Next grape variety. Next grape variety. Come on. Chenin. Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc. Where do they use Chenin Blanc? Yeah, where do they Loire. use Malolatic? Loire. Loire is one of them where they want to make a richer style. What else? Because Chenin has a naturally high, is a naturally high acid variety. Let's go. What else? Bye, South Africa. <laughs> I'll help you. South Africa. Another white grape <laughs> variety. Viura could, could use melodic fermentations. Yeah, but usually Viura, they try to make a sort of a humble, simple style. So there has to be a grape variety where producers, they can um, achieve a high quality wine and where they have this sort of a um, high ego trying to make a, a, an impressive wine. Think of all the top regions that make outstanding white wines. Think laterally. França, Portugal. Espanha. Right. Condrio, they use quite often melolactic because they want to make Indian a English. real rich yes. uh, wine with a lot of intensity and creaminess and richness and the spiciness that comes from the oak. Okay. The wines usually from the south of France, the south of Rhone, like a Hussein Massan, they usually do that. You will be surprised to know that some Hieslings, Grand Cru Hieslings in Germany, 
they allow it, but they don't allow for a long extended period of time. They'll do like a for less than a week. And the idea is more of a having this richness and creaminess and round texture as opposed to the mellow aromas. So basically, whoever is trying to make a rich, impressive white wine would allow malolactic. So not necessarily for the, uh, the, 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 the texture and, and reducing the perception of acidity. But I would not be surprised if this, if this wine had a little bit of mallow. And that would justify the creaminess and richness that we get. And I wouldn't be surprised if this wine had, I don't know, a week in contact with all the skin contact, pre-fermentation, and maybe during fermentation, but not after fermentation, just to extract a little bit more of a richness and depth from the skin, but not much. And that would explain a little bit of this grippiness um, of texture. Okay, that would um, explain a little bit, but I don't get as phenolic and bitter as I would get from, from low quality, okay, wines. All right, so can we think of any country in South America that would make a white wine like this? Does it, that, does it tell you anything? For me, Chile. Why Chile? Explain yourself. Um... For me, the, the, there is some ripeness and uh, from the coastal, um, the coastal parts of the Chile, mm -hmm. uh, the high acidity or medium mm -hmm. plus acidity, mm -hmm. for, for me, it's natural. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't think that the, the wine was corrected. Uh, but I, 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 I feel the, the roundness, the, the, the creaminess of the, the wine. And uh, maybe the mallow is it's screaming, but I, I don't get the, the, the aromas of mallow. That mm -hmm. what intrigues me a little bit. Uh, I didn't get any wine in Argentina or Uruguay that are made in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I really think that Chile has more, maybe more experience mm -hmm. doing uh, very good wines like this uh, mm -hmm. with some richness, but it's only a guess. Bruno, if you say, you know, um, it's Chile and it's coming from a coastal region and that explains the high acidity and you have Chardonnay, that's why, um, which is aligned with a non-aromatic grape variety with perhaps a little bit of Vionier or a little bit of a, I think Vionier for, for and Hussein, let's go crazy. Chardonnay, Vionier and Hussein, that explains the criminalism, and the richness. Um, and perhaps the phenolic bitterness. And then you can say, you know, it was aged in, um, in old um, casks, you know, wood casks, which that explains Chile. Well, but that could be Chile, Argentina, Brazil, anywhere. But, you know, you can say that. If you, if you wrap it up, your answer in that way, that could be an argument. But people will think, okay, so you have that high acidity, coastal region makes sense. Uh, but I don't think that all of these flavors is in line with the aromas that we mentioned. I think there is a lot more here that goes beyond Chardonnay and Viognier to this wine. I had as a tasting note to share with you guys. I said medium lemon, medium plus intensity. So for me, the, the, I know it's not it's not really screaming, but for me it's a semi sort of um semi sort of um aromatic grapes to the blend. That there's a few aromatic grapes to the blend. So for me it's like a medium plus. But then then it starts with honey, peach, dry apples, and tangy, saltiness. I got a little bit of saltiness to the to the nose, which I, I would like to call it tangy. 
a little bit of citrus and I got a lot of floral. So it's a youthful wine. And again, if you're saying, Bruno, that it's coming from a coastal region, this tanginess or this saltiness to the nose explains proximity, proximity to the ocean. But I can't find one single grape variety that would be able to get all of this. But then there's another thing that intrigues me, and I could be completely wrong. It's a dry wine with medium to medium, medium body sort of thing, yes. and low alcohol. I think it's about 11.5 to 12. You think it's, it's <clears throat> low alcohol? I, I don't find high alcohol here. I, I don't think it's over I 30. I felt it's no. so warm in it, my mouth. For me, it was medium plus. Low, medium, or high. So do you think it's medium, think, like a 13%? I think, I think medium. it's medium. It's 12. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I think. 12 and a half or 13. 13. Again, I, up. I, I, I could it's be embarrassing up. myself in front of you guys. And I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy to, to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong because it means I'm learning. But I think that, that what would I be good feel, for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the warmth that I feel, that I find, it's more of the grippiness than the alcohol. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dumb here. I think the alcohol is more on the lower side. I think, and all this creaminess and richness is wine making technique. I also think it is a high acid wine, which is, is made that way because of the varieties that they have used. And also, I do agree there's a medium flavor intensity, very rich and creamy and, and, and creamy texture. But I do like the comments that Ligia made with regards to the oak. I don't think it's brand new oak. And in fact, I think that the kind of oak that they're using it's a non-common oak, so it's definitely not oak. It could be another kind of another kind of wood, you know, you know, like a Brazilian wood, like um, um, what they call it, um, acacia. Could be acacia. Could be something it different. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. And then I'm I'm trying to think what what are the the varieties, the original varieties that came to South America. So I know that Tejontes is not a, a, a great variety that arrived in South America. It was, it, was, um, it was crossed and then South America. So what did the Spanish bring it over? What they brought? Uh, yeah. Albarín. Albarín. No. Go on. Could it be Pedro, Pedro Ximenez? I would Pedro say. Ximenez. In South America, in Chile, is used uh, on the north. Yes. And they use it to, to make piscos too. And there Argentina. are some... Uh, yeah. So let, let's Argentina think in the past. Too. Yeah, so let's think mm -hmm. in the past. So they what they brought? They brought Pedro Jungle, Jimenez. There's sorry, there's two minutes left or two point something minutes left. We're gonna open you one in a second. Okay. So I think of Pedro Jimenez. I think of Semillon, which they, they brought in about in, in the past because you know it was popular worldwide. Chenon Blanc, because it's a great variety that could be adapted to um, high climates like in South America. Um, I think of, uh, there could be Chardonnay here, but I don't think it's, it's the major component, the major, the, the major. I think that there could be some Muscat or Muscatel that could lead us to the, the, the phenolic that we get on, on the aroma and the high acidity. So this is what I'm, I'm, I'm gathering. And it could be all packed together, all blended in. And then if, if we are thinking of Argentina, and now we have to decide is the Argentina or is, is it's um, Chile? You know what I mean? Where those grape varieties are more predominantly um, cultivated right now. So let's stop and I'll open a new one and send you the link on, on the WhatsApp group. So hold on a second. See you in a bit. Okay. <laughs> 